Welcome to Mashman Studios VFX Fundamentals. So today we're gonna take a look at cameras and uh, backplates, lenses, crop factor and these kind of things. Yeah, it's very important when you match a camera in Maya. I wanna take this camera here, my, my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera I recently bought and match it. So I was looking into uh, the equations. Normally Maya, when you import uh, a backplate, uh, the camera is set up for a full frame sensor. So this one has a kind of a two times crop compared to uh, a uh, full frame camera. The 5D Mark III there that's filming on now, it's 36 by 24 millimeter. This one, the um, sensor is 18.96 by 10 millimeter. So that's almost a two times crop. If you have a smaller sensor and use this uh, 20 or this 50 millimeter lens on to this, if I would have a dumb adapter just uh, taking my EF lens and uh, adding it here onto my uh, Micro Four Thirds camera, this would essentially become a 100 millimeter lens. And I don't want to do that because that's gonna. I I need really wide lenses to. Uh, to have something that's like a normal lens. So what I do here, I add this Metabones adapter and that's essentially like a magnifying glass. So it takes my 50 millimeter lens and uh, reproject the lens here onto a smaller area. It's XL.64 and that means if I would take my 50 and uh, take 50 by 0.64, I get this new angle of view on this lens. So I need to figure out here, we need to set the sensor size in Maya, we need to take whatever lens by 0.64 and that's the new lens and sensor combination to be able to match this in Maya. But as you know, 3D everything renders straight and lenses have imperfections and the imperfections comes in the form of lens distortion. So first, before we can take any backplate into uh, Maya, we need to undistort the plate. And that's something we can do by essentially shooting a grid. So what I did here, if I if we look here, I have this, this the cutting mat here. It has a grid on it. So what I did, I shoot my lenses. I mount this onto a flat surface, like the wall or something and I mount, uh, mount this on a tripod and I shoot a frame. I take this into DaVinci Resolve because this one ships with DaVinci Resolve. I use the undistort plugin to figure out how much distortion my lenses have and I export the plate after it's undistorted and that's gonna give me the best possible match when I match the camera in Maya. So let's see how we can do that now. Okay, so here in DaVinci Resolve, so I've imported my footage here and um, I have some settings here, so let's take a look here. So I have my timeline resolution 496 by 2160 and that's kind of it. So um, what I did here, I took my, you can see here, I have a grid here already. If I go to the Fusion tab, we have here um, a... Uh, set of nodes here so I can disconnect this merge here so we can see. So I used the lens distort node to take away the distortion here as much as I could. I guess there's more scientific ways uh, of doing this in a 3D equalizer and those programs but yeah so this is how I do it. So I have this lens distort node. So this one is good because you can undistort. So what you do here you first undistort your footage so now it's if i now connect this grid so we can compare let's take this grid here and skew it a bit as well so it's gonna be uh, rotate just to see here i can start to line up and see that we get pretty straight lines here so is this node here the lens distort? Let's let's take something crazy so we can see what happens. It's gonna be now it's gonna bowing out this direction. This is too much. I think two seven. There's uh, if if your lens has a lot of uh, distortion, you might be able to 
go in here and tweak individual effects here but I think the base that I had are point so what I did here I just copy now this node here copy and go to uh, something I want to export let's say I want to export let's take a new clip just take something here for example uh, this one doesn't have you can see it's kind of it's, it's bowing out there Let's do a quick grade on this just to set the levels a bit. When I raise mid tones, like so. Go back to fusion here, and now I wanna, wanna straighten this out. So I just hit here and paste in my distortion node. So if I hit Control P, you can see kind of cleans out the distortion there. So yeah, it's going to be easier to match this in 3D. So what you do later on when you have rendered something out, you actually take away this distortion node, comp, uh, comp your stuff, and then you use uh, the, the reverse of the, your lens distortion to bring the distortion back from the 3D. So you actually distort the 3D in the end to match the lens or the plate. So you can just try that so you undistort and if you see it distort it's gonna bow out into the other way so yeah so now it's kind of bend the 3d if you would this will be a free view you're gonna get it to match the curvature of the lens there instead let's take undistort so yeah so when you are happy with uh, the undistort you uh, want to export so in my case i guess it's gonna be export one frame so you can go to the deliver tab just set in so i and o in and out that's just going to be one frame say what type of um, material you want to export export exr tiff or uh, like any other format okay so let's uh, jump over to maya now so here's the setup so we have this uh, mat here and uh, it's uh, measured by the same dimensions as I have in on the set. So, and I also measured here to get, uh, let's put it into, so we have like 12 centimeters here. That's the distance that this cutting mat was compared to the front of the desk here. So yeah, that's some of the dimensions here. So, but yeah, so I made a photo scan. So let's take a look here. So I took a, f uh, yeah maybe 25 30 photos around the, the studio and uh, made a quick photo scan out of this to get some rough dimensions and i scaled it up so if i now actually hide everything except this i scale it up so the the mat have the same dimensions so yeah and also have this um, lens here roughly so where I placed it so yeah and I also now know kind of roughly where my camera was so we can start by um, creating camera so let's do that so we want to first off take a look here that's my camera we want to rotate it I guess this way let's go into uh, my settings here on the output object display here and say I want to have a larger display on this one so we can see it better in my view here kind of place it roughly where my camera was let's take a look here so ideally generally here if i take my view view uh, so you want to have it there ish so yeah let's take a look here now so um if I now uh, hide my mesh here and take my cubes and all of that, this is a full frame lens by default. So uh, that's a uh, 36 by 24 millimeter. So let's look through the, the camera we can see here, see what happens. So let's take this to first off a 24 millimeter lens. So, so 24. So that, that's my lens, but that's the actual uh, viewport that I see from my Blackmagic because my my lens is eight, my sensor size is 18.96 by 
10. So that's kind of a two time crop and but that's too much because we see here 24. Yeah, yes, I have a 24 millimeter lens, but I also have this speed boost that I talked about. So the the math for that was so if we take here calculator uh, 24 times 0 0.64 15.36 uh, so let's enter that now so 15.36 so that that's better that's better way better so let's take a look here now taking this take a look where do we where are we so let's let's take my uh, exported uh, image plane here and stick this into the background so we have something to match against so um, yeah let's do that so we take this plate here go to image plane import image and browse for the exported uh, backplate that I made from DaVinci Resolve where I understored it okay so there we have it and uh, now we want to take a look here see what we have so first off let's hide this placement here so we can see what we, we're kind of there but the problem here or let's actually take this so we want to place this somewhere around where the where the camera is there so let's take this now and just see so we're we're almost there let's take this and see here just wanna slightly get this in the ballpark so okay so i'm just slightly adjusting this because yeah i'm not sure that my camera was super straight there so i have to nudge this a bit and see if i can get this to match might have a little slight shift here as well onto this so this is gonna be a little of a trial and error and the thing is this set that if you look here at um, at my uh, my placement so that's kind of it there kind of match there and there and now if I unhide this again we can see here that yes uh, my camera if this was an ideal camera I would expect the camera body actually to be there kind of like the sensor but yeah um, lenses can have some uh, like discrepancies when it comes to how a real world camera works against a 3d camera so there's a lot of variables if you take a real lens for example if you take my my, this 24 millimeter lens and if I zoom it or I can't zoom it, if I set the um, the focal length you will see minimal breathing so the breathing in a lens is also actually shifting uh, the focal length so the less expensive lens you have the more breathing you're gonna see when you shift focus in the focal plane so i think that might be related to some of the discrepancies why this 3d camera here is not actual back there and the other thing that i'm not really sure about is my if i look here in my scan we can see this compartment here is this metabone speed bolster i might it might be related to this extra glass i think it has a five six glass lenses that reprojects the screen so I think that can be involved why it's not 100% matching uh, in the perspective but the good thing here I can kind of easily get this to line up so if we would place my lens or uh, a uh, cylinder here so you have to import my, the real life I have this uh, modeled that's the dimension of this lens. I have to unhide this again. Yeah, so this uh, scan here, obviously I didn't take enough picture there, but uh, I know that this lens is roughly about 12 centimeters in diameter. So that, that kind of match my, my lens there. If I hide this. Yeah, that's, that's kind of 
in the ballpark there. If I take the, the real lens that I have uh, modeled, it will match better. So yeah, we, we kind of have now the basics here. We can nudge this uh, probably just, just a tiny bit here. Uh, so now we have the basic lineup and obviously if you would have a, um, like a tracked lens you would end up uh, matching this maybe even closer if you would have like a 3D tracked lens. We're in the ballpark here so now we can start to place objects and render it from the perspective of this camera here and my backplate. Crazy alien jumping up here and doing his thing so yeah. Okay so now we know how to import this lens with the backplate into Maya so if you want to support my channel consider subscribing and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. See you on the channel bye bye.